Land Rover made the Discovery Sport to fill the gap that was left by the departing and frankly aged Freelander. Well, that's how it first seemed, but Land Rover, they don't want us to see it like that. They tell us that this is a whole new model in a whole new position. In fact, I can tell you what they've said. They've said to us, it's a whole new concept, modern, relevant, compelling. And they go on to say that it connects with us on an emotional level. Well, okay, so that's the marketing people. But is there any truth in what they're saying? And in a world full of SUVs, where exactly does this Land Rover fit? You only have to take a quick look at the Discovery Sport to confirm it's a Land Rover product. All of the brand's design language is present and correct, from the clamshell bonnet to the floating roof, while the car's bold lines are clearly inspired by the upmarket Range Rover Sport. The rounded nose and slim grille are pure evoke, as are the black wheel arch trims. Those headlamps feature crosshair style LED daytime running lights, and the tail lamps get a similar treatment. There's a mix of body coloured and black window pillars in a nod to the Freelander which it replaced, and the roof subtly curved back to a high set rear end. To my eyes, and when viewed from any angle, what we have here is a handsome, purposeful looking Land Rover. Despite being relatively small, this cleverly designed body offers practicality, with plenty of room inside for five in regular use. Most models come with a pair of extra seats stored in the boot floor, making this SUV a useful seven-seater. They're not the biggest seats on the market, but do add versatility to this cabin. There are other seven-seaters available, of course, with competition coming notably from the Skoda Kodiak, and that car offers greater value for money than this Discovery Sport. Generally, the Discovery Sport cabin is pure Land Rover. This is a well-built car. The materials are well chosen and pleasing to touch. The switch gear and controls are all taken from the Evoque, which is a good thing. It manages to feel like a premium product with a robust edge. The only detraction from this quality is the agricultural manual gear change, which is notchy and imprecise and lets this otherwise premium car down. The solution is easy. Choose the Sublime 9-speed automatic. Where this Land Rover steals a march over all of its rivals is off the beaten track. It has better ground clearance and the front and rear overhangs are shorter and higher, so steep slopes are easily negotiated. There's a 600mm wading depth and its terrain response system can adapt the four-wheel drive's traction control to suit different conditions, helping the car go further than most owners would dare take it. Just choose between normal, mud, sand, rocks and snow modes and then let the car's sophisticated traction control system do the rest. On most roads, the Discovery Sport rides smoothly at all speeds, especially on the motorway. Clever adaptive dampers are available as an option, but really there's no need to bother spending the extra money on them. Things can get a touch choppy around town though. Expansion joints in the road and worn surfaces unsettle the suspension a little bit, a problem that is exacerbated by fitting alloys larger than the standard 18 inch ones. 20 inch wheels may look good, but they are best avoided. The steering is light and slightly lacking in feel, which takes a little bit of getting used to as the pace rises. The steering is linear though, and once you've adapted to this, you can actually develop quite a pleasing flow down a twisting road. The well-modulated and strong brakes help when you're pressing on. This car has a charm to the way it feels on the road that defines the sport as not just a refined cruiser, but a car which is actually good to drive beyond all else and wonderfully typical of Land Rover's current output. So, should you buy one? Well, the rich seam of desirability that Land Rover tapped into with the Evoque is readily apparent here. Not just on how it looks, but also how it drives. You have the addition of two more seats than most other cars in this class, and there's refinement from these new Igenium engines. What we have here is another convincing, satisfying baby Land Rover with driving finesse 
and capability. Oh, and yes, the Discovery Sport eclipses the Freelander that Cara replaced in every single respect. So, if you want that modern Land Rover experience, underpinned by a car which is better proportioned to meet practical needs, I'd go and check out the Land Rover Discovery Sport.